Today we're going to talk a little bit about a flat head syndrome, also called a plagiocephaly. Uh, it's a pleasure to, a pleasure to be uh, on this presentation. Uh, I thank all the Inceptive uh, team. I think it's a great project to talk about uh, common issues related to uh, development in infants and to get this resource to the parents. I think it's a really great project. Uh, before starting, talk about uh, the flat uh, head syndrome. Some basic uh, knowledge and things that uh, I think it's important to get before we start uh, really talk about the issue. So we have two basically different things when we talk about flat head syndrome. One is congenital, the other one after birth issue. Normally, most of the cases we treat and see in clinic will be after birth, uh, especially because of the position of the baby after uh, in the first uh, months after birth like we are going to talk a little bit more in detail later. Uh, but some uh, babies, because of some constraint issues during gestation, could have already some difference in the shape of the head after delivery. So first of all, it's really a common thing, especially after 1992, when uh, the program for the back to sleep program, it was uh, done and really successfully by the American Academy of Pediatrics, uh, when it reduced uh, like for half the incidence of death, uh, uh, sudden death syndrome in infants, just putting the baby in that position in their back uh, during the sleep time. And because of that, uh, we have some, a little bit uh, more incidence in this shape of the head, the flat head syndrome of plagiocephaly. But uh, it is more a cosmetic issue. We see later that uh, it's not uh, clear if it can cause any delay in the development in those babies. It's associated with some delay, especially motor skills. But uh, it's not clear if it's the uh, syndrome is the cause of that or, or the opposite. So uh, besides being very common, it's treatable. And more than treatable, it's preventable with simple issues that we, simple uh, methods that we can uh, do during the sleepy time and when the baby is awakened. So let's uh, take a look on that and keep in mind that there's nothing to worry about. Uh, we can deal with it really simple, um, just chanting a little bit how we position the baby and how we would deal with them when they are awakened. So first of all, what is uh, flat head syndrome? When the baby is born, uh, the skull is not fused like we have in adults. So the bones are loose and they are mobile. And depending on the pressure that we put in some of these areas of the skull, we can change the position of these bones. So here, for example, in this uh, illustration of a position of plagiocephaly in the right side, since the baby is positioned with the right occiput uh, with the pressure in this spot, all the right side is pushed forward and we have this parallelogram shape of the head, like all the right side was pushed forward. So this is positional pleasure cephaly. We don't increase uh, intercranial pressure. We don't change the fusion of the bones. Uh, we don't uh, change any structural in the brain. We just change the shape of the head and have some cosmetic issues. The first thing to differentiate is plagiocephaly versus cranial synostosis. So plagiocephaly is what we just uh, saw in the previous illustration. So for example, here, we have different sides of view of this head. Uh, and the best view would be like looking from above of the infant head. So here we have that parallelogram shape. We look to the right side and all the right side was pushed forward. If we look for the ear in the right side, the ear is also positioned uh, more anteriorly in relation to the other side. So it's like a symmetric uh, uh, anteriorly dislocation of all the right sides in this case. When you talk about cranosinostos, this is slightly different. So the two most frequent uh, cranosinostos we see, the first one would be scaphocephaly. So in the midline between these two bones, the parietal bones, we have a suture. And in those uh, kids, the suture is fused precociously during the uh, congenital phase uh, period. So after birth, in the first months, we uh, start seeing that the shape of the head is more narrow and more long. 
and the width is more uh, short. So we have this uh, typical uh, shape of the head. The other one, barcocephaly, would be when the coronal suture, the suture between the forehead bone and the parietal bone, fused precocely. And then we have it's like the opposite of the previous one, where the head appears more wide and short. So this is different from what we are going to talk today. This is the position uh, plagiocephaly. Here we can see the comparison between this head shape, the more common one. So plagiocephaly is uh, by far the most common. It is not a cranosinosal. It's just a positional uh, issue. So we have uh, right side dislocation, all the right side is pushed forward because of some pressure that is put in the right occiput in this kid. The best way to see it is looking from the top, from above of the uh, child's uh, head. And this is easily differentiated from the most common chronic endoscopic uh, case that we see in clinic. So for example, scapocephaly, we have this uh, long uh, head in the anterior posterior position, while in the brachocephaly, it would be the opposite. So the lateral lateral uh, distance would be much longer than the anterior uh, posterior position uh, proportionally. And this would be the normal uh, head shape. So about the incidence of plagiocephaly, what we saw is that uh, before the AIDS, it was common to see papers talking about 0.5, 1% in incidence of plagiocephaly, uh, really low incidence. And nowadays, we have papers that show up to 46% of that. So this is most likely uh, because of the success of the program of the Back to Sleep uh, from the, the American Academy of Pediatrics for reducing the incidence of sudden infant uh, deaths. So we're not talking about, uh, not, talking, not saying that the program has, uh, it's causing us to, the program is really successful and should be followed uh, to reduce it, and they reduce it by half the incidence of death. Uh, but as a consequence, we have more pressure in this back portion of the head. And if we had, for example, some kid that has slightly uh, diminished uh, motor skills and has a preference to put the head in one position, we might have some kind of asymmetry in the head shape. This is illustration is just to show uh, the ear position. So we can see that all the right side is pushed forward, different from some kind of cranosinosis where we have this flattening in the output, but the ear don't uh, follow this uh, anterior dislocation. Another thing that we can look in these kids would be the fascia symmetry. So here from normal, uh, going to plagiocephaly, brachycephaly, scapocephaly, when you talk about cranosinosis, we have much more facial uh, symmetry issues. With plagiocephaly, this is much less. And one important thing to say is that uh, there was some concern about uh, the jaw development uh, and how this could influence and also the ear position during the development of these kids because of the plagiocephaly. And nowadays, what we understand is that after the uh, development uh, from uh, infanthood, childhood, and then adulthood, we don't see this as a problem in long term. So we don't see any kind of uh, disturbs that uh, is clinical, clinical significant for these kids, uh, either for their head, uh, ear position or the jaw uh, dislocation. So it's really benign uh, issue that we're talking about here. When you talk about the causes of uh, flat head syndrome, the first and most important one would be the sleep position. So when the kid is positioned in his back, in her back, uh, the pressure that is put uh, in the occipital, uh, occipital part, even the right, left, or in the bottom, uh, the posterior part of the head, could push this uh, part of the uh, head forward and cause some asymmetry. So this would be the most common, especially because of the way we position kids today uh, during the sleep time. Another thing to consider would be any kind of interim constraints, for example, twins, uh, or when you have loss of amniotic fluid uh, during gestation, all those could cause some uh, constraint in the uterus and cause some head asymmetry just after uh, delivery. Uh, slow motor development is something interesting to talk about because uh, in the previous years, 
we had a lot of research trying to look for if plagiocephaly is associated somehow with uh, motor development and how is this association. So what we understand today is that plagiocephaly do not uh, appear to cause any delay in development uh, clinically significant. What we think is that uh, kids with motor development issue, we have more uh, weakness of some kind of muscle in the neck or some difficulty position or uh, moving the head around and would be more easy to have some uh, kind of flat head syndrome or plagiocephaly. Uh, another thing to consider is congenital articulate, uh, like we see in this illustration, uh, kids with some uh, contractor muscle would have this uh, typical uh, appearance in the position of the head. So they would look uh, to the opposite side of the contracted muscle and the head will be treated for the ipsilateral side. And this position during the sleep time would be something that I would push forward that side of the head, causing the flat head syndrome. And this is also easily treatable, treating the cause. So treating the cotorti cause with physical therapy uh, would solve this, this issue and also uh, diminish the incidence of flat head syndrome. And one thing that we cannot uh, over talk about is the tummy time. So tummy time is really important for many issues. One of them, diminishing the incidence of flat head syndrome because uh, the kid will move around, will diminish the stress on that side of the, uh, the head. And also the motor development appears to be uh, also influenced by this. Since the uh, baby will have more uh, range in motor uh, emotion of the head from one side to the other side and uh, try to move around and get more stimulus uh, during the day, this also appears to influence their motor uh, development. We'll see some, things, some pictures later uh, showing how, it's, uh, how the thumb time should be done. So when your kid has uh, any kind of head asymmetry, and you come to the diagnosis of plagiocephaly or flat uh, head syndrome, the first thing is to calm down. Uh, it's not uh, something that will influence the development of the kid. It's so easily treatable and preventable. So the first thing uh, would be education and how to reposition the baby during the sleep time. One thing that uh, really helps is like just getting some uh, things under the shoulder of the kid uh, during this sleep time, and turn it slightly the head uh, to one side, and then on the other day, do the same thing on the opposite side. And this would uh, prevent that the breast would be always in the same spot. About sleep aids, uh, we have a lot of products today that sell and say that it's a good thing to prevent plagiocephaly. Uh, it's important to uh, say that most, in general, most of these uh, sleep aids are not recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics to prevent uh, flat head syndrome. So we have a lot of products there. Some of them appear to be uh, a good thing to position or help in position the kid, but most of them are not recommended today and they have not been recommended by the Academic Association of Pediatrics. So my recommendation would be avoid uh, uh, deciding about the sleep aids by your own, maybe talk with the PO pediatrician about them and choose what is best for your kid uh, with this uh, recommendation. Helmet therapy, we have a lot of uh, papers and results today that show how effective they are. So there is no doubt in our day that the helmet therapy can help some kids with the, some kind of head asymmetry by plagiocephaly, uh, but we have to consider some things. First of all, the age of the kid. So before five months, four or five months, most of the kids will be benefit just with repositioning and educating about the sleeping time, how to position the kid, uh, reinforcing the term time during the awake time of the kid, and no helmet therapy or any other kind of therapy would be necessary. Just repositioning and educating would be enough to uh, correct that uh, head shape. Uh, for kids that do not uh, solve their problems uh, with the repositioning, with education, uh, treating the underlying 30 calls, then the helmet therapy 
should be considered and the best time to start it would be maybe between five, six months of age. Uh, this is something that needs to be done by our studies uh, and followed with your physician uh, that is specializing uh, facial, craniofacial uh, therapy. And normally it takes around three to four months. Uh, the uh, helmet is shaped uh, individually for either patient. And uh, this would prevent some kind of pressure in that uh, spot that uh, is causing the shape asymmetry. And the underlying torticol is something that we see kind of uh, really frequently in those kids. And we have some features layers that show how we could do with it, but basically we're talking about physical therapy in those, uh, for those kids. So this is something that could be done by the parents uh, in home with their kids to try to deal with vertical. So those are some illustrations about the stretching technique. In this case, for example, uh, the one hand, the left hand, is positioned on the right shoulder and pushes slightly down, while the other hand is going all the other side uh, to the right side of the head, from the left side to the right side of the head, and pushing uh, toward the uh, left side, so like tilting the head. And this would stretch the muscle a little bit. Another thing that could be done when the kid is uh, positioned on its back would be the left hand, for example, in this case, for a right uh, torticollis position over the uh, shoulder and the head tilted to the other side, uh, looking for the right side, in this case, helped by uh, the right arm. Yeah. And also some positioning techniques uh, when holding the kid. For example, this one would to simulate the first kind of the uh, by side that came to the, the head. So the forearm here is positioned between the ear and the shoulder, and this could push a little bit, tilt a little bit the head toward the left side, while the other hand is coming between the legs, going all the way to the arm of the kid, would push a little bit uh, the arm, the shoulder uh, down in this case, so it's stretching this muscle. All this could be uh, done at home, but should be uh, talk it to your physical therapist or pediatrician before you start doing and also teaching how to do it at home and uh, if your kid is uh, would be benefit would benefit uh, for those kind of therapies the most important of everything about plagiocephaly I think is prevention it's easily preventable so what caused the uh, rising incidence was positioning the kid on their back, and also uh, we note that some parents are afraid during the day about the tummy time because since they have the knowledge that position the uh, baby on the back is there to reduce the incidence of sudden death, maybe the problem is positioning the baby on the tummy. That is not uh, what we think uh, I understand nowadays. So during the awake time, the tummy time is really important. If it should, have, uh, should start just after delivery, just after the first week, uh, and increasingly slowly conform uh, that they tolerate it. And uh, the goal would be to do at least three times a day. Here we have some illustrations uh, how to make it more entertaining and make the kid enjoy more the time time. So for example, in this first illustration, uh, if the parents go to the floor with the baby and get some time with them to uh, play around and stimulate uh, the kids, the time would be more, uh, much more appreciated by the, uh, by the infant. Also, some pillows below the chest and tummy could help to get more comfortable, use some toys, stimulating to look around from one side to the other side, uh, putting the kid in the uh, left and always avoid any kind of uh, dangerous thing that could injure the kids during this time. So any sharp edge, uh, the stutters should be removed from there. Uh, one other thing that can really help, especially during the sleep time, to help the kids to uh, change the position of the head from one side to the other side, would be to change the position of the toys. So when you put the, uh, the kid to sleep and you feel or have that uh, understand that there is a preferred side to the head or the right or the left side, try to move around the toys. So 
in the first two months of age, it's really easy to just put some kind of uh, tissue under, uh, underlying the shoulder and just push the shoulder a little bit for one side and this would help in position. But after two months, this would be much more difficult because the kid is already moving around and have more interest to uh, explore the uh, environment. So in those cases, after two to four months, moving around the toys that they have uh, around them would really help to stimulate change in the position of the head from one side to the other side. Reduce the time of the baby spend, that the time is, uh, the baby spends lying on a firm flat surface like car seats also helps. Uh, our recommendation is to leave the car seats inside the car, not take it outside. So it will reduce the time that uh, the baby would be positioned on those uh, kind of seats. And of course, every time you have any concerns about the head shape, about motor development, about a neuro development, talk to your pediatrician. He will be the more, uh, the best one to talk to you to get all the doubts uh, out. And when necessary, uh, it would be uh, talk to you about any kind of therapy for craniofacial symmetry and all these uh, things we are talking about today.